Hello, and welcome once again to me talking over a video game. Today we're going to be playing Knights of the Old Republic. This is a game that I played from a pretty early age. Got it when I was about 12, back in 2002. It was the first game I had for my Xbox. I remember playing it on my Duke controller. I really liked the Duke controller. Everyone else hated it. I didn't have to share, so that's cool. Uh, anyway. So. I'm going to start out as a scoundrel. You can choose from all these different heads. I like this guy. I like how he has like a scar and stuff. I don't know. So, scoundrels are good because um, they have skill in persuasion and uh, security and stuff like that. So, that's. Well, really, anything you want to do is good. It's, this is a role playing game, so just, you know, play a role. Um, See, this isn't exactly how I want to start. I want my wisdom and charisma to be high. Constitution can be low. Just need really high dexterity. So I want to be able to shoot well. Dexterity makes you more accurate with guns and it makes you uh, harder to hit. So I'm going to put some points into stealth. Awareness. And security, since I have so many skill points to spare. I should also put stuff in treat injury. Everybody needs treat injury, but not not every class is good at it. But even if you're bad at it, it's uh, it's worth using all the skill points to, to get it. It's been a very long time since I played this game, so I might end up making bad decisions. We'll see. I'm sure it'll all come back to me later. When it's too late. Um, so I can give myself an attack bonus with blaster rifles. That's probably what I'm going to be using. Or I could give myself this feat. Yeah, I think I'm just going to start with the attack bonus. This is another thing that scoundrels have. They have sneak attack. 1 to 6 points of extra damage to attacks when the target can't respond to the attacker. I.e. if I'm in stealth mode. Extra damage is applied to attacks made from behind the target. Get stunned or otherwise immobilize targets and any attacks from your stuff. Sneak attack only works if the target is within 10 meters. Oh. Oh well. So you can choose your name. I like to generate a random one. This thing comes up with some good names. Jun Jast. I like that. Let's see if we can come up with a better one. Laylo Jerry. You know what? I like that. That's good. We're gonna go with that. Oh man, six hit points. Well, at least I'm hard to hit. Laylo Jerry. It's like a mobster name. Oh shoot. Uh, I have to mute this. Because I don't want. Disney coming up. Oh, well, I just completely skipped the opening crawl, so that's one way around it. I didn't even mean to do that.
We've been ambushed by a Sith battle fleet. The Endar Spire is under attack. Hurry up, we don't have much time. Who are you? I'm Trask Olgo, ensign with the Republic fleet. I'm your bunkmate here on the Endar Spire. We work opposite shifts. I guess that's why you haven't seen me before. Now hurry up! We have to find Bastila. We have to make sure she makes it off the ship alive. Bastil is the commanding officer on the Endar Spire. Well, not an officer, really. But she's the one in charge of this mission. One of our primary duties is to guarantee her survival in the event of an enemy attack. You swore an oath just like everyone else on this mission. Now it's time to make good on that oath. I know all about your reputation. How you used to smuggle spice and blasters along the Corellian run. I guess the Republic figured since they couldn't catch you, they might as well hire you. And I'll admit, the Republic is in desperate need of someone with your kind of skills. Desperate enough to overlook your shady past. But now that you've signed on for this mission, you're part of the Republic fleet. And Bastila needs all troops at her side during this attack. I love how he has this much time to say all this while the ship's being shot at. Okay. Okay, let's go help Bastila. So hurry up and grab your gear. You need to suit up so we can get out of here. Okay. That's just how his voice sounds in my head. His face sounds like that to me. Steel generator, master pistol. Okay, let's move out. We should stick together. You'll have more success with a party than on your own. So this is a very classic style RPG. You have parties and all that. Because of the attack, this room is in lockdown. But don't worry, I've got the override codes. You'll have to use me to unlock the door. I didn't really grow up with RPGs all that much. This was actually, this was really the first RPG that I ever really got into. What? Now that the door is open, you better take the lead again. This is Carthel Nassi. The Sith are threatening to overrun our position. We can't hold out long against their firepower. All hands to the bridge! That was Karth contacting us on our portable communicators. He's one of the Republic's best pilots. He's seen more combat than the rest of the Endar Spire's crew put together. If he says things are bad, you better believe it. We have to get to the bridge to help defend Bastila. There's a map of the Endar Spire and a copy of Karth's message in your electronic journal, just in case we get separated. Almost like he knows I have amnesia. No problem. Got it. Okay, maybe I don't have amnesia yet. I don't know. Maybe I just forget. These Sith must be the advanced boarding party for the Republic. Here's my sniper shot. Or is my defense quite a bit? But hey, I'm a risky guy. Yeah. A lot of people, oops, a lot of people complain about this combat system. Um, I mean it's turn-based, so I you know some people really don't like turn-based combat on principle. But if it's not that, I don't really know what they're comparing it to when they say it sucks. <laughs> Like, uh, personally, I, I, I like, I'm okay with this combat system. It's not, it's not the best. But I don't really have much to compare it to. I, I really just don't even play that many turn-based RPGs. This might actually be the only one. What? I mean, a lot of people grew up with, like, Chrono Trigger and stuff like that. Final Fantasy. But, uh, yeah, this, this was really my first RPG experience. I didn't, I didn't have that frame of reference. I 
open this already? Oh yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, I think I missed something back here. Out of my way. Oh, that's the, that's that remainder. That's container. That's called remains. Jeez, I can't talk. It's 12 a.m. right now. Can you tell? Yep, and I already picked that up. Cool. I already have amnesia. I don't. I don't even even need to get a head injury. Sacrificing their men. What? They're all too happy to do it. I should be lowering my defense all the time. Sure. It doesn't even do that much damage. What is the point? Because sniper shot sucks, or do I suck? Like because my character sucks. Should not be doing that while Trask is under attack. So if you're able to hit enemies really easily, you should just go with the power blast. Power blast lowers your uh, chance to hit a little bit. I think it does. What? Uh. Does it? No, not skills. It's... Ah, I hate all these tooltips. Uh, power blast. Yeah. Negative three to hit. Yes. But if you're really good at hitting the guys, or if they're just really easy to hit, then just go with it. I didn't give my character power blast because that's not really the style I want to have. More of a sneak attack guy. Whereas power blast is for. Uh, people who kind of rush in the ranged weapons. Dark Jedi, this fight is too much for us. We better stay back. All we do is get in the way. That was one of the Jedi accompanying Bastila. Damn, we could have used her help. I remember when I was younger, I didn't want to play this part in front of my parents because he says damn. And I was really Shit. anxious to play this game. And I didn't want it to get taken back. So. Yeah. For whatever reason, my mom wanted to watch me play it. I was like, eh. Sure. I'll play a little bit later. First time I played this was at my friend's house. He, he's the one who got it first. Actually, he so he had an Xbox first. I had a PlayStation 2. And then after I played this game, this is actually what made me decide to trade my PS2 in for an Xbox. The bridge is just beyond that door. Better equip your melee weapon. There isn't much room on the bridge, and it's suicide to use a blaster in close quarters. I should equip a melee weapon too. Oh, and by the way, you can't pick up the dead Jedi's lightsaber. Yes. All right. So can this guy? This guy has pretty good strength. He's an all-around good soldier. However, I'm pretty much useless with a sword. We'll be 
fighting in close quarters on the Oh shut up. Let me do what I want. What? Actually that was really bad strategy what I just did. <laughs> Should have had him open the door. Don't use sniper shot because leave you wide open for the swords. Power attack. He has good to hit. Basto is not here on the bridge. They must have retreated to the escape pods. We better head that way too. The Sith want Basto alive, but once she's off the ship, there's nothing stopping them from blasting the Endar spire into galactic dust. Yes. What? Cool, you get to see the bridge of the ship. Ah, okay. my my mouse cursor got outside of the window. That's not good. Shouldn't be able to do that. But you have this, this game doesn't really want for you to play it in windowed mode. You actually have to go into the INI file to set that manually. Left click on the character record menu icon in the upper right corner of the screen. Then follow the instructions given on the screen. Dude, I just fixed that wall. What are you doing breaking it like that? Increase my blaster pistol, but I want to be focused on rifles. I don't have a r rifle right now, but uh, just hold off. Let's see. Saving throws. Empathy. Ah. Plants are useful. <laughs> I'm going to go with that. There's something behind here. Damn, another Dark Jedi! I'll try to hold him off! You get to the escape pods! Go! So you might be thinking it's strange that we're fighting um, guys with lightsabers when we have this swords. This is Carl Nassi on your personal communicator. I'm tracking your position through the Endar Spire's life support systems. Basilis escape pod is away. You're the last surviving crew member on the Endar Spire. Now, I can't wait for you much longer. You have to get to the escape pods. But be careful. There's a Sith patrol just down the corridor. Use your stealth skill to sneak past him. What's this? Huh. Got an old save here. See if I can pull off a sneak attack. Nope. Oh, I should not be using this feat. Somehow managed to not get hit. That good dexterity. Okay. 
could throw a grenade at him, but I might need it later. Back in the day when I was playing this, um, why did I not turn on stealth? I don't think this is gonna help now. Oh well, bombs away. So what I was gonna say is that back when I first played this, I. Careful. There's a whole squad of Sith troopers on the other side of my car. You need to find some way to thin their numbers. You could reprogram the damaged assault droid to help you if you have enough repair parts. Or you could use computer spikes to slice into the terminal and use the Endar Spire security systems against the Sith. I don't really have the skill to do either of those things, but um, as I was saying, I was really, um, I really had no idea how the combat mechanics worked. Back when I first played this game. I just kinda um, dumped a bunch of points into strength, um, dual wielded swords and hope for the best. But it's a lot more rewarding when you actually understand what you're doing. You can do different character builds, uh, different strengths, experiment. It's really a big part of the fun with this game. Ion Blaster. It's good against droids. Alright. You've made it just in okay. time. There's only one active escape pod left. Come on, we can hide out on the planet below. I'm a soldier with the Republic, like so you. you. We're the last two crew members left on the Endar Spire. Basila's escape pod's already gone, so there's no reason for us to stick around here and get shot by the Sith. Now, come on, there'll be time for questions later. I've been forgetting to voice my guy. <laughs> He's a silent protagonist, so he needs me to voice him. Oh, you can't see it. Oh, you still can't see it. Oh no! Oh, the cinematics don't work. That sucks. Well, uh, anyway, it's the escape pod came out of the ship and then it crashed on the planet. Whoa, hold on. Don't try and get up yet. You were smashed up pretty bad when we crash landed here on Terras. Don't worry, we should be safe here in this apartment. I gave you something to help you sleep. Just. Get some rest and let the Coltopaks do their job. And this is a cinematic of Bastila fighting a Sith. It's really making me mad that this doesn't work. Stupid OBS. Good to see you up instead of thrashing about in your sleep. You must have been having one hell of a nightmare. I was wondering if you're ever gonna wake up. I'm Karth, one of the Republic soldiers from the Endar Spire. I was with you on the escape pod. Do you remember? Right. I'm Lalo Jerry, by the way. How did we get here? You've been slipping in and out of consciousness for a couple of days now, so I imagine you're pretty confused. The voice comes to change. Try not to worry. We're safe. Sounds like a twat now. We're in an abandoned apartment on the planet of Terrace. You were banged up pretty bad when our escape pod crashed, but luckily I wasn't seriously hurt. I was able to drag you away from our crash site in all the confusion, and I stumbled into this abandoned apartment. By the time the Sith arrived in the scene, we were long gone. The Sith. Terrace is under Sith control. Their fleet is orbiting the planet, they've declared martial law, and they've imposed a planet-wide quarantine. But I've been in worse spots. I saw on your service records that you understand a remarkable number of alien languages. That's pretty rare in a raw recruit. But it should come in handy while we're stranded on a foreign world. There is no way the Republic will be able to get anyone through the Sith blockade to help us. 
If we're gonna find Bastila and get off this planet, we can't rely on anybody but ourselves. I'm gonna stop trying to do the voice. It's not working out. That smack to your head did more damage than I thought. Bastila's a Jedi. She was with the strike team that killed Darth Revan, Malak's Sith Master. Bastila is the key to the whole Republic war effort. The Sith must have found out that she was on the Endor Spire and set an ambush for us in this system. I believe Bastila was on one of the escape pods that crashed down here in Terrace. For the sake of the Republic war effort, we have to try and find her. How can one person, even a Jedi, be so important? Vasila is no ordinary Jedi. She has a rare gift the Jedi call battle meditation. Vasila's power can influence entire armies. Through the Force, Vasila can inspire her allies with confidence and make her enemies lose their will to fight. Often that's all it takes to tip the balance in a battle. Of course there are limits to what she can do, but from what I understand of her ability, it requires great concentration and focus to maintain her battle meditation. The attack on the Endar Spire happened so fast, she never had a chance to use her battle meditation. Like us, she barely got out alive. So, what do you suggest we do next? Vassal's gonna need our help. Many of Darth Malak's followers can use the dark side of the Force, and the Sith have already killed more than their share of Jedi in this war. Nobody will be looking for a couple of common soldiers like us, and if we're careful, we can move about the planet without attracting notice. A luxury Bastila won't have. She's gonna have half the Sith fleet looking for her. They know how important she is to the war effort. The whole planet is under quarantine. No ships can land or take off. So if Bastila's gonna escape Terrace, she's gonna need our help. And we'll probably need hers. While you were out, I did some scouting around. There are reports of a couple of escape pods crashing down into the Undercity. It's probably a good place to start. But the Undercity's a dangerous place. We don't want to go there unprepared, and it won't do Bastila any good if we go and get ourselves killed. I'll tell you whatever I can, though I, I don't know how much help it'll be. Do you know about Malik and the Sith? Everything I know about Malik is pretty much common knowledge. He escaped the trap that killed Darth Revan, his Sith Master. With Revan's death, Malak became the new Dark Lord. It's obvious that Malak's a ruthless tyrant who'll crush anyone who stands in his way, just like Revan was. Experience has shown that the Sith won't stop until the Republic lies in ruins. Malak and his Sith don't respect anything except raw, brutal power. It's hard to imagine how someone who used to be a Jedi could become such a monster. Malak and Revan were once both part of the Jedi Order. But they were young and headstrong, and against the wishes of the Council, they went to battle the Mandalorians on the Outer Rim. Something happened out there. Something corrupted them and drew them over to the dark side. Or maybe there was something rotten inside them all along. I don't know. They formed an army of ex-Republic soldiers and Jedi who'd fallen to the dark side, with Revan at their head, until Revan was killed by Vassila's Jedi strike team. But even that didn't slow the Sith down. Malak just stepped in and assumed Revan's role. He took control of the Sith Armada and resumed the bloody conquest of the Outer Worlds. I'm pretty amazed that this didn't just pour me to tears when I was 12. This is a lot of exposition, but uh, still is pretty interesting, I think. Look at this. Why would I say that to him? That's silly. This game lets you say some really ridiculous stuff. Well, I hope you're right. But the Republic hasn't been able to stop them so far, even with the support of the Jedi Council. I think Basila may be the galaxy's last hope. Taurus was once a magnificent planet-wide metropolis of towering skyscrapers. But that was a long time. The upper city where the rich citizens live is is still pretty safe. If it wasn't for the Sith occupation and a planet-wide quarantine, it might not even be a bad place to live. But farther down, things have degenerated. The, the lower city is nothing but a slum overrun by swoop bike gangs, waging a never-ending war for control. And the undercity is, well, it's even worse. 
The lowest level of Terrace is a wasteland overrun by rack ghouls. Mindless, diseased mutants that attack on sight. I've already entered all this info into your datapad journal. I give you permission to do that. I understand why you want to know more about me. I, I kind of get the feeling we'll be spending a lot of time together over the next while. But this isn't really the best time for long introductions. We should stay focused on the task at hand. There'll be a time for that later. Good idea. We can use this abandoned apartment as a base. We can probably get some equipment and supplies here in the upper city. Just remember to keep a low profile. I've heard some grim stories about the Dark Jedi interrogation techniques. They say the Force can do terrible things to a mind. It can wipe away your memories and destroy your very identity. But I figure if we don't do anything stupid, we should be okay. I mean, after all, they're, they're looking for Basila. Not a couple of grunts like us. All right, soldier, let's move out. I don't think you can do anything with this yet. Well, you can upgrade. Upgrade this fiber blade. Uh, fiber blades are made out of cortosis. That's how they're able to fight against lightsabers. Right, you alien scum. Everybody, get up against the wall. This is a raid. <laughs> That's how we sit deal with smart mouth aliens. Now the rest of you, get up against the wall before I lose my temper again. What's this? Humans hiding out with aliens? They're Republic fugitives! Attack! The Sith are pretty much hot-headed space Nazis. to shoot at any alien that looks at them funny. Let's see, what kind of stats does Karth have? It's really good dexterity, so... Dual blasters, that lowers his uh, two hit a little bit. Should be okay, though. Quick. Yes. I love how this guy is too busy fighting against this defenseless alien. Well, I guess he's not completely defenseless. He's pulling out a sword. The immediate threat is over here, dude. Uh -huh. sure. Oh. <laughs> Every time there's dialogue, this game... Oh, well, almost every time there's dialogue, this game gives you an opportunity to be a douchebag. That was one of the things that I really liked when I was younger. It's like... I don't know, something about it appealed to me. You can just go around and be as much of a dick as you want. I think it's the same reason why people like Grand Theft Auto. No Got it. The thing about this game is when you when you do bad things, not only is it fun, but it also gives you a tangible benefit. So like you see you have this light and dark side scale. So if you 
if you do uh, good things and nice things, you go towards the light side, of course, and the closer you are to the light side, the easier it is to cast light side force powers, like heal and um, a bunch of other stat buffs for your party. But if you do a bunch of dark side stuff and go to the dark side, then it makes it easier to cast dark side powers like force lightning, force choke, etc. I think it just bumped my microphone. Um, but yeah, so it it's actually serves a real gameplay purpose. So that's pretty cool. Who are you? What are you doing in here? You can't just come barging into someone's home. That's no excuse. You can't just go around barging into people's apartments because you're curious. But at least you're more polite than that pig Holden. Just one of Darvik's men who can't keep his hands to himself. But all he got for his trouble was a nasty scar from my vibroblade. Too bad I'm the one still paying the price. I, I don't want to talk about it. I'm in enough trouble already. Besides, I don't know if I can trust you. Then why did you bring it up? Well, I suppose you seem like an alright sort. When I cut Holden, it made him back off, but it also embarrassed him in front of his friends. Holden's a spiteful little hut slug. He went and put out a bounty on my head for what I did. That's why I'm hiding out here. <laughs> you can just do this. Uh, it's not really worth it, though. I doubt it. Holden is one of Darvik's men. When you work for the local crime lord, the authorities tend to turn a blind eye. I'm afraid this is between me and Holden now. Could try, I guess. He usually hangs out at the cantina in the lower city. It probably won't do any good. Holden's used to getting his own way. That's one of the fringe benefits of being a goon for Darvik. Working for the local crime lord lets you get away with things. Still, I appreciate the offer. I can't help you there. So the thing about this game's morality system is um, what a lot of people do is you know, they'll do a light side playthrough or a dark side playthrough. Typically that means you know, just doing light side stuff all the time or doing dark side stuff all the time. But um, you can actually do a lot of things that fall on both either side. But as long as you across this threshold in the middle to a light or dark and you get the benefits of either so like for example if I were to just go ahead and murder her but then do five good deeds afterwards and go back and you know go further to the light side then I'd still be on the light side path I'd still get the light side benefits but I would be a murderer so, the, the morality system is, it's really, I think it's actually, it's actually cool the way it works. Because, uh, because he, no. It's just, um, it determines your relationship to the force, and you can, you can really just role play however you want, and, yeah, you can do really random mean things that don't really make much sense, like kill people for no reason, but if you think about it in the context of you know, the benefits you get from being on either side of the spectrum, you know, there's a reason to be a jerk for no reason, because you know, you get, you get dark side powers. So, I don't, I don't know, I think it's kind of interesting. <laughs> What's so great about these energy shields? Chigratulo <laughs> Kachichu ita bodunga. Tolobank, Waleo Ganda Naru, 
And I can tell you from experience that they aren't any good at all against a simple vibroblade. That's why the Republic has been training soldiers in hand-to-hand -hand and melee combat. That's why you see people using fiber blades and stuff. Even though, you know, everyone has guns. It's pretty cool. I, I especially like it because it reminds me of Dune. Energy shields and Dune. A little bit different though because, you know, you, you can get through them with edged weapons. But uh, they're actually melee shields that you get later. So you, you can you can go full doom doom <laughs> later. Tag this du bongo cookie bat panka. Ching parachiska mule tunarana. Chan shak bulara. Umrao chiska duchi. On chuban jiska yank. We tam boragatong. Mulira a shang turung ni na potata twa. Chigra tu loda. Bograshi on neo compa chin tumbo mochuba. Loda dita kun. Ida patiso batua kat mojeshak pakat. Kie no no nama paole rachikun. This planet is segregated between humans and aliens. Achuta. That gives it a bit of depth, not just a big city planet. It actually has problems. Swords are crap. Uh, let's see, what can I sell? I think I want to sell that frag grenade. Might use that repair kit later. I didn't mean to buy that med kit. Oh well. I would like to have an energy shield, but now I don't have enough money. Well, I, I didn't have enough money to begin with. Ah, eh, screw it, I'll come back later. No problem. I'm just gonna do some home invasion. No big deal. It's not like the authorities care about this place anyway. Pudu, Tony Rama, Napraka, Donko, Searcher, Chupapanki. I don't get dark side points for this. Raboda ni wikis na toma, chupinga ng kongu na muri ra ra bes, wala kung bes, jinga muri ra, chupinga ng konek. This game has really good music. Um, the guy who did the music is Jeremy Sewell. He's no the Got it. same person who did music for Morrowind, Oblivion, and Skyrim. I think he did this tra uh, this soundtrack or Morrowind. I don't know which was first, because I think 
both of these games came out in the same year. He there, what, what, what's where you're walking? I just clean those floors. Uh, Jeremy Sewell was really busy back in 2002. My name's Kadir. I'm the janitor for this building. You must be the new tenant here, right? Never thought they'd rent that abandoned apartment. Hmm. You look like an off-worlder. What happened? You get stuck here because of the quarantine? Can't see any other reason someone would want to rent that old apartment. I ask you some questions. Don't know how much I can tell you, but seeing as how you're new here, I guess I can try and help you out. Tell me about Taurus. Decent enough place to live, I guess, except for the lower levels. That's where the swoop gangs hang out. Just stay in Upper City and you'll be fine. You also might want to check out the cantina. I used to go there when I was younger. Good place to get a drink and find out what's going on in Upper City. Where's the cantina? Just keep following the apartment complex ring until you come to the elevator. It'll take you out to the upper streets there, and, and from there, just head south a ways. You can't miss it. I should get back to work anyway. I'll probably see you around. I'm, I'm here most of the time. The building doesn't clean itself, you know. Oh, why my guy sounds like a surfer dude. It's, it's, it's his face just sounds like a surfer dude in my head. Probably sound like a mobster or something, because like his name is Lalo Jerry. He's a scoundrel. Yeah, how you doing? My name's Lalo Jerry. I got connections. This is the escape pod we crashed in. Ever since the Sith quarantine, Javier's cantina is packed with off-worlders. It never used to be that busy. It's kind of similar to Coruscant. The architecture is a little bit different. Coruscant with more segregation. It's wrong, Karth. Yes. What do you think about this place? Oh, I already asked him that. Me? Well, I've been a star pilot for the Republic for years. I've seen more of my share of wars. I fought in the Mandalorian Wars before all this started. But with all that, I've never experienced anything like the slaughter of these Sith out of this combination. Not even the Mandalorians were that senseless. My home world was one of the first planets to fall to Malak's plane. The Sith bombed it into submission, and there wasn't a damn thing our Republic forces could do to stop them. It shouldn't be my fault. I did everything I could. I followed my orders and did my duty. That that shouldn't mean I failed them. I, I didn't. Yeah, no, I... That's not what I mean. I mean, I, I'm sorry. I'm not making much sense. You probably mean well with your questions. I'm just not accustomed to talking about my past very much. At all, actually. I'm more used to taking action. Keeping my mind focused on the business at hand. So let's just do that. If you have more questions, ask them later. A lot of people complain about Garth being whiny. Yeah, I guess he does kind of come off that way. A little bit. Do I have anything that I can buy in here? I don't have enough. Come back later. Cantina. Don't bother me, I'm here on a fish. I also might notice that uh, the city is very lax about their gun laws. Don't you just love watching the Kazakh players? All that strategy, all those credits. It's enough to make a girl get all flushed. They just let me walk around with this huge laser gun to a bar. What do you want? Have you come here just to bother me, or do you wish to test yourself against the best Pazak player on Taurus? <laughs> blah, blah, blah. 
feel like you. My name is Niklos. I'm the unofficial champion of the Pazak circuit here on Taurus. If you don't mind losing your wager, we could play a few hands. You don't even have your own deck? Then why are you bothering me? You can't play Pazak without your own deck. If you're serious about Pazak, go speak to old Garok on the other side of the tavern. His gambling days are over, and uh, he's looking to sell his deck. Hello there, youngster. You interested in buying the Pazak deck of an old man looking to get out of the gambling game? Just 50 credits, and I'll sell you all my cards. I'll even throw in a free lesson to boot. It's a great deal, if you can afford it. Sure, I'll buy your deck. Glad to see you're interested in the grand old game. The rules are pretty simple. Here, I'll load them up into your data pad so you can check them out anytime you want. Good luck. I hope the game's as good to you as it was to me. Now, is there anything else I can do for you? Of course, of course. My mind isn't as sharp as it used to be. That's why I'm giving up the gambler's life. But I think I can still manage to answer some simple questions. I spend my days here in the cantina, sipping ale and chatting with the folks who want to buy. I don't have much use or care what goes on outside these walls. I don't see much point in worrying about that kind of stuff now that I've given up the gambler's life. Is there anything else I can do for you? Don't get me wrong. The game's been good to me over the years. I've traveled the span of the galaxy, from the core worlds to the farthest reaches of the Outer Rim. I've won countless fortunes, and lost countless more. But that was long ago. And things have that changed. galaxy far, Gambling far away. A young man's game. That's why I sold my old deck to you. I don't have what it takes anymore. And I hate to let my cards go to waste. No, of course, of course. No sense in a youngster like you wasting your days away with an old man in a dingy bar. But if you ever want to chat, you know where to find me. Okay, Niklos. Let's play game. I saw you getting a Pazak lesson from that old fossil Garuk. Learning the rules of Pazak is easy. But actually playing the game is a much greater challenge. Normally, I wouldn't bother with a novice like you. But since Gerud was banned for hustling cards, I haven't been able to find a good game around here. Do you wish to play him? I'm going to kick your ass. I'm going to enjoy relieving you of your credits almost as much as I'm going to enjoy humiliating you. <laughs> Alright. So, Pazak is uh, basically blackjack, but a little bit different. Instead of 21, the upper limit is 20. Um, there we go. Might have been too early to use a card, but we'll see. Ah, this is risky. Wow. I am really lucky today. Probably has a plus two. Ah, shit. Uh uh. Well, at least he's used a card. Ah! Uh. This game is rigged.
I'm gonna go one more turn. That's bullshit. Come on, game. Fazak is not for everyone. It requires both nerve and skill. Perhaps you should practice before risking your credits against such a skilled player as myself. <laughs> Unless you like losing. Oh, a soft track, a lot. Confidence is inspiring in one who has such a propensity for failure. Foolish, <laughs> but inspiring. I kick your ass so hard. Drink nine whole credits on this. I probably shouldn't use a card so early. Uh, screw it. Oh, come on. I always hated this game. I was never really all that good at it. But, like, then you see bullshit like that happen. You gotta wonder. Is this really fair? And they throw me a bone just to make me feel like I'm not being cheated. Alright. See if I can pull this off. Oh, my odds are not good. I'm standing. Fazak is not for everyone. It requires. If you ever wish to test yourself. Okay, so I have no money now. That's okay. We can do some jobs. Hi there. I haven't seen you around before. Of course, they don't give us Sith officers from the military base much time off. I'm off duty right now, so I'm not in uniform. My name is Sana, Junior Officer, First Class with the Sith Occupation Force. Nice to meet you, Sarna. I'm Lilo Jerry. I'm actually a little surprised you're talking to me at all. Most of the people here on Taras can't stand Why did I sound Sith? Southern? I can make this job pretty lonely. And I, I guess I technically am Southern, but I was trying to do like a mobster voice and it came out completely wrong. That's true, but people don't appreciate what we've done for them. We could have slapped a curfew on this whole planet, but we didn't. You know, it's like everyone on this backwater planet is in a permanent bad mood. Don't they know we have to make the best of things? Well, I mean, your mood tend to, tends to get bad when you trap everyone on the planet. Exactly, it's all about attitude. I didn't ask to be assigned to this backwater planet, but I try to make the best of it. It's pretty easy to get depressed on an assignment like this, but we do what we can to keep our spirits up. That's true. It's nice to meet someone who understands what I'm going through. It's good to talk about this stuff. It gets pretty lonely up at the military base. I have to get going soon. I've got a shift at the military base, but some of us junior Sith officers are having a party tonight to blow off some steam. I'd really like to see you again. Why don't you drop by the party? I'll show you where it is on your map. Don't be late. We're starting right after our ship's end. Most of us won't even be going back to the base to lock up our uniforms. I look forward to seeing you there. Where's this party? we on the east side of the north upper city. What? Why are you speaking to me? Can't you tell from my clothing that I'm of the nobility? Get away from me. I can't be seen talking with a common rabble. You wouldn't be proper for a man of my stand. Don't make me shoot you with this. I wish the off-duty Sith would stop coming in here for drinks. I mean, scouring the undersea looking for the Republic escape pods and they leak at the sewers. You know, it's bad enough the Sith conquered this planet, but do they have to come in here, relax, and rub their presence on our faces? Isn't this band great? They can't leave Terrace because of the Sith quarantine, so they've been playing here every night. Talk about a good break for us. Like a 
people teleport when they get in your way. I can't believe we couldn't get arena tickets for this match! Now we'll have to watch the duel on the view screen. Who cares? It's Duncan and Gurlon fighting. It's not like we're gonna miss anything good. Shh, they're about to start, so quit complaining and just watch the view screen. Ladies she was and one gentlemen, I draw your attention to the dueling ring. Here, two combatants will battle for your viewing and gambling enjoyment. Now, I hope all of you are better down because we're ready to roll. In this corner, I give you Gerlon Two Fingers. And over here, looking to climb the ranks yet again, is the ever persistent Dead Eye Duncan. And to nobody's great surprise, Deadeye is down again. Don't worry, folks, he's just unconscious. As usual, our medics will have him up and about in a bit. Well, that was quick, wasn't it? So I give you the winner, Gerlon Two Fingers. Gerlon used to be one of the best in the game. Now he's barely better than old Dead-Eye Duncan. Marl's been around forever. I wonder if he ever thinks about retiring. What are you looking at, fresh meat? You want a piece of me? You want to step in the dueling chambers with me? It looks so tough. I think I could beat you in a duel. Big talk. Go speak with the hut in the corner to back it up. He's the duel organizer. I'll look forward to our match. Fresh meat is just what I need to end my losing streak. I haven't seen you around here before. You looking to step into the duel ring? Or did you just come to watch? Good to see some new blood in the fight game. Things have gotten pretty stale around here lately. If you're serious about this, go talk to Azure the Hut. He's the duel organizer. He'll probably start a rookie like you out against Duncan. I know what you're going to say. I'm so beautiful, I'm so attractive. How can someone who looks so hot with a weapon in her hand be called Ice? Well, I've heard it all before. I'm here to take care of business in the dueling ring, not to have some slack-jawed, goggled-eyed man slobber all over me. So back off. Oh, that was cold. Now you know why they call me Ice. If you're looking for a match, go talk to Azure. He's that big hut over there in the corner. Otherwise, just go away. Hello there, off-worlder. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Marl. I'm one of the duelists here at the cantina. I was wondering when you'd get around to talking to me. I love this guy's voice actor. No, we've never met. It's just that most people who come here to watch the duels are bored nobles, looking for a little excitement in their drab lives. But you're different. You look like you know a thing or two about combat. I'm guessing you didn't come here to sit on the sidelines and watch a duel. Are you looking for a match? I am looking for a match. If you're interested in setting up a match, or if you want to place a wager, just go speak to Adger. He's that hut over in the corner. He'll make all the arrangements. Goodbye, stranger. Maybe we'll talk again later. What's in this for me? 
Kara voi pa mulci, gumana ba mulera. How do you stun someone with an edged weapon? Fibro blades and blasters, and nobody ever dies. How come I get the feeling you're trying to take us for a ride? Jioka kon mulera, kim kon jo pesha, no ba mulera ji. But I want more than ten percent. Okay, I'll do it. Name's Lilo Jerry. I think that sounds better than a nickname. But you can't synthesize speech from my name, so you have to use the recorded name. This is for the best. We could use those credits from these duels, but using your real name is too risky. The Sith might have come across a crew manifest back on the end of our spot. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, draw your eyes to the center ring. We have a very special presentation in store for you. You've seen him lose night after night after night, but this time, he's after fresh meat. In this corner, I give you Jedi Duncan. Bless Joe. And in the other corner, a relative newcomer to the Tannis dueling scene, emerging from the shadows with no history, no past, and no name. The mysterious stranger. I wonder if I can sneak attack him. I've never tried this. Uh, he seems to know where I am. And I've already lost my range advantage. Oh well. Wow, it's taking me this long to kill him. Well, not kill him. It's Whatever. Over. The fight is over. The mysterious stranger has won. But really. Are any of us surprised? Dead Eye losing is it you? You have to do better than that to impress us, stranger. Oh, you'll see. What do you want? Oh, let me guess. You beat me in the dueling ring, and now you're gonna rub it in my face. Yeah, well, I'm used to it. So pardon me if I ignore your gloating. Gee, I wonder why. Couldn't have anything to do with being the worst duelist on Terrace, could it? Even a rookie like you got the better of me. Look, I admit it, you're better than me. Everyone's better than me. Blindfolded, one-legged tack with a rusty knife could probably beat me, okay? Is that what you wanted to hear? You satisfied yet? Are you happy now that you've taken the last shred of dignity I have? Oh, uh, poor guy. Oh, well, okay. Goodbye, then. I saw your match against Duncan. Not bad for a rookie, but Deadeye's a joke. Even after I lost the use of my fingers, I can still beat him. Go talk to Azure, the duel organizer, if you want to step up to the big leagues. I'll show you what it's like to fight a real duelist. They have different dialogue every time you beat a new guy. What do you want? Wait, wrong. Oh, never mind. Wait, what? What do you want? Wait, let me guess. Now that you're a duelist, you figure we have something in common. Something to chat about, right? Wrong. Just because we're both duelists doesn't mean we're suddenly friends. 
So give me some space, stranger. I've got nothing more to say to you. I see you got your feet wet in the duel ring. Not bad. You've got real talent, kid. Stick with it and you'll go places. Goodbye, Stranger. What the hell are you talking about? Uh, okay. Goodbye then. Dude, does this regenerate? No. This guy. Talk to Ajur. He's in charge here. Yeah, 10%. I do another duel. Might as well. I don't think this game has auto save. Thanks. Better be careful then. Yeah. <laughs> Energy shield will come in handy. I think I can do without Ladies it. Ladies and gentlemen, draw your eyes to the center ring. We have a very special presentation in store for you. In this corner, one of the greats, a man so tough, even a disfiguring injury couldn't end his career. <laughs> I give you Gerlang Two Fingers. And in the other corner, a relative newcomer to the Taris dueling scene, emerging from the shadows. Oh, he's really interested in that wall. No past and no name. The mysterious stranger. Wait, what? What am I doing? You can do better. It's over! The fight is over! The mysterious stranger has won! Gerlon losing to a rookie! Is this a sign that his injuries have finally caught up with him? Or is the mysterious stranger for real? Only time will tell. My dexterity weren't this high, that, that would have been a lot tougher. What do you want? Oh, let me get... You beat me fair and square, stranger. But if I still had the use of my fingers, you wouldn't have won. Back before my injury, I would have mopped the ring up with you. I see you got your feet wet in the duel ring. I see you got your... Goodbye. What do you want? Ro okay. <laughs> Okay, so next time there'll be more dueling, and I'm going to try to actually win at Zak. Till then, Lalo Jerry signing off.